This week, we will look at traits that distinguish different theropod dinosaurs. That's not a dinosaur, that's a lion. Let's think about the jaw of a lion. It can bite things in the front, and it can chew and crunch things in the back. There's the eye hole and the hole for the muscles that pull on the jaw. Let's consider a Tasmanian devil. Notice that it has the crushing teeth toward the back of the jaw. In a Dimetrodon, the teeth are different sizes, and they also extend pretty far back from the front of the jaw. Now, all of the animals we've looked at so far are synapsids, not dinosaurs. Let's consider now a basal tetrapod. This animal has teeth that are more or less the same size and shape, and they extend from the front to the rear of the jaw. Now, there's a reason I'm bringing this up as a basal trait. When we discuss dinosaurs in this class, we've been distinguishing them by their smooth hips. And we can look at that trait even in one of the most basal dinosaurs, the Eoraptor. This puppy-sized animal had the smooth gait of a dinosaur, but not the furcula that we find in more derived theropods. That wishbone is what sets theropods apart from other more basal dinosaurs. This week, specifically, we want to consider very large theropod dinosaurs, including the Allosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus rex. One trait to note here is that we find the teeth on these very large animals in the front of their jaw. Here, as a contrast, is an Eoraptor skull, where, from the schematic, we see that the teeth are illustrated as extending quite far back on the lower and upper jaw. Here in the Tyrannosaurus, you can tell the teeth have moved. They're basically only manifesting in the front, especially on the lower jaw. We see the same thing if we look closely at the skull of an Allosaurus and a Ceratosaurus. And if we think about the biomechanical consequences of having these teeth positioned at the front of the jaw, you can think about the fact that this animal is probably not doing a lot of chewing and crunching. Now, something I want to bring up is that very large theropod dinosaurs appear throughout the fossil record and all over the cladogram. There is not one group of theropod dinosaurs that got large. Many different lineages of theropod dinosaurs yielded very large animals. Now, if we want to narrow down and look at a more specific clade within the theropods in Titanurae, we can look at the Avitheropoda, the bird beast feet. And one thing that these animals have is only three fingers on their hand. Let's consider the Allosaurus, oh, three spooky claws, the Ceratosaurus, three creepy fisty claws. Here is a Lythronax, only two fingers, like a T Rex. And here's a Therizinosaur, the slicing lizard, with these incredibly freaky, big, clawed limbs. Various theropod dinosaurs, large and small, that are more derived have three or fewer fingers on their hand. Now, considering hands brings us to wrists. If we consider that the forearms are altered by having fewer fingers, there's another important alteration, and it shows up on the wrist in the form of a particular bone, which we call the half moon wrist bone, or the semilunate carpal. Let's consider our Therizinosaurs again and look more closely at their large, creepy, clawed hand. Here in a case is an individual dinosaur hand bone along with the wrist bones. And here, at the very edge here on the right, what you can see is a small wrist bone that has sort of a crescent shape to it. Let's swing around the side and look at this little wrist bone is something that you could hold in your hand. It's about the size of a domino. And this facilitates some twisting of the wrist. Let's think about looking at this Therizinosaur now and how big and weird its hands are. And how big and weird the hands are on the Oviraptor dinosaurs. They're big, they're weird. The wrist allowed these hands to twist and do weird stuff. And many, many of these animals were also feathered. Now, this animal was definitely feathered and was definitely not flying. The physics would not work out. But a lot of these animals that are in the Maniraptora, the hand thief animals, they have big, weird hands. And those wrists allowed them to twist those big, weird hands. 
Now, if we want to move forward and look at a group that is including animals even more closely related to our modern birds, we need to consider feathers more specifically than just having any feathers at all, because that's actually pretty frequently found in dinosaurs. There are simple feathers that help with insulation or elaborate feathers that might help with decoration, but we're talking about pinaceous feathers, and these can allow propulsion. Pinaceous feathers attached to the shin bones of the dinosaur are found in this next group, Paraves, the kind of bird dinosaurs. And if we want to move forward to birds, what do we need? Well, we've discussed it before. We need the pyga style. That little tailbone, instead of having a long bony tail, birds, modern birds, have a stumpy little tailbone. And it doesn't matter if you see a lot of feathers and you see the tail being active in the balance of the animal. What is inside of that animal's skeleton is still stumpy little pyga style tailbone because they don't need a skeleton in there to do the job now that the very elaborate pinaceous feathers and other decorative feathers are managing a lot of the physics. Now landing at the lion again, why am I showing you this? Because dinosaurs are still with us today. These very derived dinosaurs, the magpies, are chewing on the leftover bones. From the lion's abandoned.